I'm not in love with real estate, you guys. Like as much Get as the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hell out. Next guest. This guy? All right. What is up? And welcome back to another awesome episode of How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. And as you can see today, we have a guest, Justin. Foster, right? Did I? I got yeah. that right. Yeah, no, I got, got it, that. Man. I'm always nervous introducing people every single time. But anyway, we will get into Justin and his background and his company and his super exciting story. It's super interesting about how he got started, um, and it's awesome for me because a lot of people look at this stuff and it's just unrelatable, right? Like, how can I buy a seven million dollar shopping center? How do I get that million dollar industrial deal or, or whatever it is? And I think the goal of this podcast is to break it down in reasonable bite-sized steps to where people can walk away from this and think, man, I think I can invest in commercial real estate in some sort of capacity. I can do it too. Exactly. Before we get into that, as you can see from our social media pages, the Facebook and the Instagram, we have been doing our cold plunge challenge, which is over by the time this is released, but you will see... Us getting in 32 degree water in <laughs> some longer uh, than others. seven to nine degree air temperature and all uh, full of ice chunks. Definitely check out that video. It was extreme to say the least. I, I don't understand. You guys want people to listen to you and you guys got into 32 degree <laughs> water. You think like that's going to like really prop you up. Yeah, maybe not. For this show, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're going to think we're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun. You know, uh, like Joel always says, we you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, you, you've got to do the hard thing. I, I think you mm-hmm. posted the other day. And it's just a testament of, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is not hard, but it's a mental fatigue going through deal after deal or researching the knowledge on how to do this. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, doing the hard thing can lead to benefits. And there's tons of medical benefits on, on cold plunges. It's... It's super awesome. Plus, it's, it's freaking insane. Like going in your pool when it's snowing and seven degrees. And yeah. it, I bet you guys feel like you, you drank like five cups of coffee after that and you're just ready oh yeah. to go. It was it, great. It was nuts. It was nuts. I'm still um, trying to warm up. Yeah. Um, other than that, we, we have a lot going on. So we, we finished out last year strong. Um, we ended with a couple of deals last year. The um, Callaway's Nursery Development we're doing down in Houston um, and the Jacksonville, Florida Starbucks Build a Suit. We've been talking about that one. Um, the loan got delayed on both of those. I mean, it's kind of the world we're living in these days. Loans are just inherently harder to get. Um, both of those loans have been finalized and both of those assets are, are now closing. I know we've called down all of the Callaway's nursery funds, um, but the Jacksonville Starbucks investors, you'll definitely be getting an email here in the next couple of weeks to call the funds down and we'll close on both of those assets, assets by the end of the month. I like it. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. So without further ado, Justin... Let's get into your background. Why are you here? Why are, why are you on the show? Tell us a little bit about um, your story and how you got involved in investing and, and, you know, just get us going. Right on, man. Well, I'm glad to be here. And Yeah, welcome. My, uh, my story started way back in the day with you, Joel. Yep. I didn't have any idea of what I wanted to do in real estate. I met you through my wife and you had been in this real estate game for a while And I had gotten hooked on, you know, just the standard rich dad, poor dad, got the bug, thought I could get out of the... We're talking seven years ago, I think is when we met approximately. Yeah. So I was 29 or something. I wasn't even 30 yet. I was working in the oil and gas industry full time doing kind of some technical stuff. And I got into sales. I was in my W-2 and I, I really didn't resonate with what I was doing in oil and gas ultimately. And I thought I need a vehicle to kind of get me out of the grind, get me out of the rat race I wanted to achieve some some level of financial success and financial independence. And so we sat down together and you were like, read Brian Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Probably so. not the only author I said. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I actually got on to some Brian Tracy, but but you got um, you helped me out. You met me where I was and I was looking at some deals. And the principle that I started to kind of adopt was I don't know how to do this. Other people have done this before me. I need to meet with the people around me that are doing what I want to do and just copy what they do. Great advice. And that became like my whole thing is like, I'm not an original person. I'm not trying to recreate the wheel. I want to find successful people who have done uh, what I want to do or have gone to where I want to go. And I just want to submit to their instruction and go out there, take action and then get feedback based on that action. So I took some action. I, I bought a triplex here in Tulsa. 
um, still working in my job and that ended up being a decent little deal for us. It was in a good area. Well, let's talk about that because I think what we're trying to do is bridge the gap between the people working their day job that's not resonating with them. They're making 60 grand a year. They're paying 20% of that in taxes. They're barely making ends meet. And they're like, okay, how do I get into to real estate? Yeah. And I don't know what you were making in all gas. Maybe you were making 80 grand or 100 grand. But in any event. It's uh, like I was making 50. Yeah, I don't know. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but but the, the thing is, okay, so uh, how big was that triplex? How much cash did it take? Yeah. What were you, what did it cash flow you? Because that was your first deal. Yeah, and I think that's super, super important, right? Because coming up with the down payment money, I, I love everybody's strategy. Like Joel's is, I applied for 10 credit cards in one day. Yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> like you always get a juicy one. You said your advice was, but don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so on that deal, I actually, we were fortunate. Our start in real estate was we sold a house in, in uh, Colorado and we were able to take some equity out of that. And we had this little seed money. Got it. So I raised some private money from somebody that I knew, but I brought most of the cash on the purchase and then they funded the rehab. So it was like a hundred and it was like $120,000 all in. We brought 80, but then I refinanced it out because I only had $80,000 and that's not only $80,000. That's a lot of money, you know, for sure. But you, you can do a lot with that. Kind of as, so did as you pay cash capital. for that first triplex? I did pay cash. And, and then you fixed it up with someone else's cash. And then you went back and pulled most of that out after you fixed I did. it up. Yeah, great, great. Strategy. I love the the pre inflation numbers too, right? Like yes. eighty thousand, one hundred twenty thousand dollar triplex all yeah. in yeah. post rehab. But and yeah, so it's over there by uh, the Pearl District if you're in Tulsa. But basically, that um, ended up I got hooked on this idea of like, okay, I got three doors, they're all paying me two hundred dollars a month in free cash flow. Now, what's the number that I need to get to? And I had this number in my head of okay this is what's going to replace my income. And then the, the next thing I did was a friend of mine who, again, I took that deal to you, Joel. And I was like, Hey, do you think this is like a good deal? And you're like, yeah, you should just do that. And then I took it to another friend of mine and he said that was doing, had been building a portfolio. And he said, well, if you're not going to buy it, I'll buy it. So that had all the confirmation in the world. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leap in. I'm going to pull the trigger. Again, great, that was the hardest. Cool. The you hardest can't deal underestimate was that deal, man, for sure. The first one. Yeah, but you can't oh, yeah, underestimate sure. that advice, right? Like, Hey, you went out to somebody who has commercial real estate experience and then they said it was a good deal. And you're like, ah, this is still not good enough. Let's, let's try another one. You know, going to that second opinion and verifying, Hey, is this a good deal? And people saying, yes, you should do that. If you don't do that, I will do that. I think people underestimate the value of that. And everyone does that. Mm -hmm. Everyone calls a guy or a girl they know and says, Hey, what do you know about this area? What do you know about this deal? I don't know enough. And if you're not doing that, you're wrong. Yeah, C- yeah. A couple of things real quick, not, not to interrupt, but, uh, you know, when I started, I called people on a couple of the first apartment deals I did and they, they told me I shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have listened to them because it, it actually, it wasn't a great deal, but I didn't want to hear that. I, I just wanted, I just wanted to, to act. Uh, yeah. but, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Step, step one, ask for advice. Step two, listen to that yeah. advice. Uh, <laughs> but the, the other thing I want to say <laughs> is when Justin came and talked to me, I obviously had moved on from single family homes. And so I, I really wasn't in a position to give him a lot of really good advice just starting out. But what I remember telling him and what I'll tell anybody that comes to me for advice is I remember telling you, you can do this. Mm. And I really wanted to encourage you like, You're going to run into obstacles. You're not going to have all the answers. You can do this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want everybody else to hear is if you're contemplating getting involved in real estate, you can do it as well. The heart, the first deal was the hardest. The fear is overwhelming, but if you'll just get in the game, you will figure it out. And and so that's the, the, the thing that kept me going is all my mentors in the books and CDs and everything that I was listening to, they all told me I can do it. Bankruptcy might be there. Failure is going to be there, but you're going to be on the other side and you're going to, you're going to be rich and, and, and it's going to work out. And you just need that positive feedback to get you through that first, second deal. Once you had that first one and you got the, you're making cash flow, then, then it's easy. You're going to motivate yourself. Yes. The, yes. the other thing I love is the leverage point, which I don't think maybe we're appreciating. Like you, you were talking about the risk of bankruptcy, right? Like he had $80,000. And he went and invested $80,000 on something without a lien and went and got a joint venture, not debt, right? So this guy's money, girl's money is also at risk too. So there's a, a really strong position for you to be in, in a first deal, which is probably what made it so painful, right? You had to invest well, so much cash for it, the return. It was, but you know, there's an, there was a game that I didn't realize that I was playing that worked to my advantage, which was 
I was starting to, I need to get some experience, you know? And so as I got some experience, I was really fortunate that I was able to raise that money from that person. And I went through the process of actually securing their debt. I did a note and a mortgage. So they were in the first position. And from there, what I realized is I can raise money and to do this, I don't have to just have millions of dollars to invest. I can go out there and I can raise private money from other people to go buy the assets that I want to buy, control the deal. And it gave me that kind of, the learning wasn't like me going on to YouTube. How do you do a note and mortgage? It was, I'm filling out this note and mortgage with this first note and mortgage. And now I can explain it to you, Joel. And if you wanted to invest with me, I can show you how your money is going to be secure. And so that, I think the principle that we're talking about is just like instruction. The learning really comes from the results. You know, after you get the instruction and you take action, then you get the result. That's your education. And I think we get it backwards a lot of times. And people get stuck in podcasts and not, no offense, but you know, you know, you get stuck in books, get you get stuck in whatever. And they they don't go and take the action to get the result, to get educated. Cause that's where it really matters. You know what I mean? Yeah, at some point when I first started, I had, I had read books and I had listened to tapes and CDs and all of it in my car. And at some point, you just have to say, you know, enough of this. Yeah. Like, I have to just go force myself to put an offer on a property, figure out how to close that property, close that property, not figure out how to manage that property. You just got to get yourself in and force yourself to, to learn. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So you got your first one, the triplex. You're, you're making five dollars $600 a month in cash flow. Uh, tell us though, now you have over 40 houses and, a, and some commercial tracts of land and some commercial buildings. So how, did, what was the next step for you? You had one winner. What, what followed? So it's kind of interesting. I, the next deal that I did was a package of 10 homes. So immediately, um, we were able to do, and I, I bought those deals at a, at a, at a really good deal. And so we were able to get into those, those houses still while I had my W2. So I went from kind of this little micro side hustle to more of a legitimate side hustle. Damn. And I got deal. really, really excited at that point. And I thought, okay, like I'm not there yet, but I could see how I could get to my financial number. But what's limiting me is the time that I'm spending on this job. And I started to like reframe, how am I looking at my employer? Like I realized that I was in business with my employer, like, like they're my customer, but I also have these customers over here in this business. And it really changed my mindset of, you know, I really want to work on my fortune over here more than serving this customer over here because I can see the how many more people I could serve, how much more I could grow, and then how much more wealth ultimately that I could build. That's so, huge. I mean, that's I've never heard that approach to time before, but you're you're saying you're essentially selling that time to your employer, but your other time that you're selling to your other businesses is way more profitable. So why why are you selling that time to your employer so cheap? Why are you doing yeah, that? Yeah, everybody's at all? in business. You're in a W two. Your your employer is your customer. That's the way that you should approach it. And then you could go out and find other customers just by serving them. And and I think it's important. You know, we call it "fuck you" money. And it's important, I think, as an employee to go get that money, not as a disrespect to your employer, but because what it, what is interesting as I started getting more and more passive income and building wealth in my job, I started like just telling everybody what I thought. I didn't care what you thought. And then it was kind of like the office, you know, where the guy goes in there and he's like, you know, gutting the fish on his desk and he doesn't give a shit and he yeah. gets a raise. Um, that's it. exactly what happened uh, within my, my, you know, kind of, I was in a corporate job and I won't get into it, but everybody was scared to say what they thought, you know, and I talked to a vice president. And I'm like, this is a dumb idea. Why are we having this meeting? I don't even understand why we're here. And, and then, you know, Boom, that became a valuable thing, right? <laughs> within that kind of culture. But anyway, I, I quit right before um, COVID and I just wanted to make a run at being a full-time real estate investor. I didn't have enough money to justify leaving. Like I couldn't pay for the diapers or anything, but I thought I got to figure it out. So what I focused on, I thought if I could find one skill in real estate, and again, I had some mentors speaking into my life at this time. If I could just focus on one thing, what would I focus on? I decided to focus on finding the deal. That's not... That's not rehabbing the deal. That's not analyzing the deal. That's not making the deal and being creative. That's like going out there and just finding people who need to sell their house or sell their assets in exchange for the convenience of me buying it. And so how did I you got, go about doing that? How did you find people that needed to sell their house? Yeah, it's a good question. I sent out marketing 
So um, we ended up building a company that was marketing a number of different channels in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Um, we were sourcing over 100 deals a year. Most of those I was selling to other investors. A lot of those we were keeping, uh, some of those we were keeping for ourselves for our own portfolio. So that's how I built the portfolio rather quickly, you know, over a couple of years. Interesting. And then, and then so we kind of scaled finding deals, sending out lots and lots of marketing, and then having all these conversations directly with sellers, buying directly from them at a discount. Um, that's, and That's a great idea, by the yeah. way. I mean, it's essentially like wholesaling. You're you're better at the yeah. We were wholesale. Finding. Yeah, yeah. We were we were in and we weren't complicating. Like we didn't make it complicated. Just like show up, be the person who's going to show up and solve this problem. You know, and it was an interesting it was an interesting ride. But what I realized is I got I kind of started buying some packages of homes too, and so I was actually making more money doing one big deal than running a seven figure wholesale business. And between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Hmm. And and so the net profit that I was getting off of those deals and the equity I was building off of those deals was huge. I bought one deal in 2021. It was 47 homes. And I took 21 of the best homes. So this is a this is an investor kind of like you that-, that Yeah, he's going through a divorce. Like people have problems. Just because you've got money doesn't mean that you ain't got no problems, Right. Just because you have a big net worth doesn't mean that you can't find somebody who has a problem who needs to sell. Mm -hmm. And so this guy was going through a divorce, real nice guy, but he needed to sell all 47 I mean, houses. Obviously not that nice of a guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I uh, mean. This is awesome. So uh, 47 houses, he wanted to sell all of them. Well, he had to. Okay. He had to liquidate because he's going through this real nasty. It was terrible. You know, he's going yeah. through this nasty divorce. Like I said, not <laughs> probably not that nice of a guy. Yeah. Sell everything now, spend the money. No, he's selling it because they have to split the cash probably. They did. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Braden's reading into it. We're not, yeah, we're not yeah, judging yeah, people yeah, that yeah, get yeah. divorced in this show, Braden. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, yeah. And, and that's the whole thing. It's like my, <laughs> my, my deal on that deal was there's not very many people who are going to be able to do this. Like, here's what we can do. We walked, we walked with him through it and we bought it like we would almost like an apartment complex. But I actually wholesaled like 28 houses and then I kept... The other ones Gosh, and that, that you, you took the best stuff man so i kind of double closed this deal and then i, I made it. i made a good amount of money and equity on the the better part of that and so so like just that move right there like you don't have to do that many big deals i realized to like really level up your game you don't have mm -hmm. to buy one at a time and it was much easier to do 47 than it was to do like one at a time to get there by far you know, it goes, it goes to show you guys, uh, you know, when Justin you know, for, first met me and he's wanting to buy his first house, like to me, I, I can't invest that much time because $200 a month to me or $10,000 flipping a house to me isn't, isn't worth it. But it was to you, and it was to me at one point too. Mm -hmm. But once you get in the game, you're you're gonna you're, you bought a package of ten, and then you're on forty seven. You don't even want to look at a single uh, family home, right? Now. Because once again, it's the same time. Yeah, deals are deals, and and so. Don't let, you know, don't be discouraged if your starting point is a house. Get in the game, right? Uh, you may not get a lot of people to help you on a house because it's just not that exciting, but get in the game. And then once you, once you get a little bit of money coming in, the anticipation builds, the excitement builds, and that further mo motivates you to do more and more. Yeah, and it's the skills, right? I mean, you're investing in yourself and building these skills, and so one little triplex and I know how to n fill out this note and mortgage. Then I go and I raise private money on this, you know, whatever, one and a half million dollar deal. That was an easy raise because I bought it right. And I learned the skill of how to buy right. You know, it, it those, those things start compounding like in <laughs> one skill of finding a deal can make you as much money in this business as you ever want to make. Just that mm -hmm. skill. Like if you only do that one, one skill of raising money can make you all the money you ever want to make in this business. Who's that? Just Hunter that Thompson doesn't? Isn't that the guy uh, that just raises money for deals? Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know deals. He just he has guys that have deals, and then he's really good at the money, and he just connects them, and that's that's his whole fortune. Yeah, I mean he he manages a fund. That's that's what a fund does. It's it's beautiful. I I think there's a lot. I mean, how long is the time frame of all this? Is it seven years? From oh, when you started? Five. Five? Between those two deals? Well, the, no, between the, the triplex. The, yeah, the triplex. Like 2018. 2018, and I bought 
No, I bought the package in 2021, so that's uh, three years. Yeah, yeah. But so, his whole investing career is is se- six, six, seven years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you had a job at that time. So uh, again, just relating this back to the basics of how to get involved in commercial real estate, it's it's stories like these I love hearing, and and it's so humbling. It makes me feel like an idiot at the same time because I'm like, why am I, why am I not doing this? I've you know <laughs> I I watched Netflix last night. I'm yeah. like, what am I doing? You know, and, and it's. It's, I don't want to say it's that easy because I know you worked really hard for that and it took you a decent amount of time. But guys, I mean, seven years is, is nothing. Like mm-hmm. se- mm-hmm. seven years is nothing. If you, if you said, hey, do you want to be financially free in a, in a commercial real estate investor seven in years seven from years now. from now, you just got to go through a little bit of shit. A lot of people would say yes. Yeah, jump on that. Well, and like, and it's, you can make it fun. Like my whole deal was this hustle is a season, not a lifestyle. Like I'm not really interested in, I'm not, I'm not interested in real estate being like, I'm not in love with real estate. You guys like as much Get as the hell out of here. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Hell out. Next guest guy, but I'm interested in my time, man. That's, this is a vehicle for me to buy oh, yeah. back my time and be with my family. And, and, and so that's I'm not always going to be, be in the game, but like, yeah, it's worth going through that season of hustle to get to a place where, you know, you can buy back your time. And, and then if you want to do a deal, you can do a deal. Hey, uh, look, guys, if you're listening to this, that is all of our motivation is is time and freedom. I guess those two things. Because mm. you can have a lot of time. Homeless people have tons of time. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just saying, like, you need, you need to have money and time to have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Uh, but I got in this game for time freedom, right? Going to the day job every day and trading 10 hours of my day away from the people that I love most in order to make, basically you're making your employer more money. Uh, they're paying me for it, mm-hmm. but they're, 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 they're winning that game. Not, not me. And I just, I, I wanted that time freedom back. And so, yeah, this is just a means to an end. Real estate is one of those unique things where you can make as much money as you want and, and you can work as little as you want, depending on how you set it up. We could, like, Brayden said he watched Netflix last night, right? We, we could do more. We could be hustling more. Nothing uh, wrong but, with but that, watching you, Netflix and but chilling, But you can't bro. hustle your entire life. <laughs> Want to buy 47 houses? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, at some point, more That's money is <laughs> <laughs> more money's not worth the trade at, at some point. Like, at some you, point, yeah. yeah. And so you have to take time uh, and enjoy the lifestyle. But there is a season for the hustle, and most people aren't willing to grind that out in order to, to have what they really want, which is that time and freedom. I, yeah. And, and again, just to recap, I mean, it, it's so like a lot of people are going to own a home. A lot of people are going to be in a possession where they sell a home and they have $80,000, right. And they have a big decision to make. What do I do with this $80,000? And most people just, spend it's it, their fatal flaw. It. They, yeah. they, they, they go they and get a over. bigger mortgage. They reset that 30 year mortgage way past retirement. You I would know, say majority people about do that. that. They, they, they like, Oh, well we got 8,000 from the sales house. Let's go buy a bigger house yeah. and uh-huh. lock ourselves down even more in the day job rat race. Yeah. But, but just like we just heard it, right. You can take that opportunity, put $80,000 into an investment like real estate, like commercial real estate, like a triplex, right? And through seven years, through not seven years, but a few years, you can begin to flip that and flip that and flip that and get sweat equity piece after sweat equity piece in a few deals a year, a dozen deals a year, one deal that's 47 deals like this crazy guy. I mean, that, that, that and, and you flip it and then you just look down one day in your Excel net worth sheet and it's like, holy cow, I think I'm worth a million dollars. And it, it won't feel real because you don't have a million dollars, but it'll be there. You've done the deals. You've done the work to make you financially free. And you, you just have to wait and, and not mess it up. But like, it's so easy. And most of us will have that opportunity in our life in the United States, right? To be able to sell a home, walk away with $80,000. It's a very real scenario. All right. So we did not get into all of uh, Justin's successes in, in real estate. He has many more stories to tell. Justin Foster, uh, what company are we promoting today? Fixed Lending. Fixed Lending. He does a lot of, of lending for people that are wanting to get into the single family uh, game, uh, both, I'm sure, purchase and rehab funds. Uh, but, but hit Justin up uh, to get more of his story. Help, let him maybe be a mentor to you. And anything else today, guys, on the show, Braden? No, I don't think so. All right, we'll till next time. Next week. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Super fun.